Hello and welcome to this edition of the Marble Rally. Five competitors this time, all in regular colors, and it's a race down the streets. A ball bearing over there on the side gets us going in yellow, starts his way down these bricks through the cobblestones. Not quite Monaco, but he's bumping up against the walls. You see some sticks there, look like they've probably been placed there on purpose, I would say. Orange and red trailing yellow narrowly getting through that area and now ooh, a brief hit off the stick and orange then bounces up right as soon as he gets the lead into another block now red takes the lead but gets caught up on the left and yellow reassumes p1 he is going to try to stay off the walls and can't do it orange shoots ahead and hits the brick green now into second orange takes the left several take the right yellow and green inherit first and second place Yellow just a glance off of one of those sticks, dislodging it. We'll see if that trips anybody up back behind. And now picking up a little bit of speed, expertly getting by that one. Now hits a little bit off that Y shape, and that's enough to slow him down. Yellow, or excuse me, Yellow, who loses the lead to Orange and Green. Orange now streaking up ahead, missing several of the obstacles, almost getting airborne off of some of these. Bouncing, bouncing over these bricks. Just glancing off of those sticks, is anybody going to be able to catch him? Is he going to slow down enough? And I don't think he will. Orange will take the victory. Who gets second? And it's Blue! Waiting for the podium finisher in third. Where did, where did Yellow come from? Yellow went way off course, but it was good enough to get third, so I suppose I won't question it. Hours ...by countless volunteers and the Marble Master himself. There you see the five competitors in the starting blocks, ready to go for 200 meters worth of racing, and they're off. Green Swirl taking the early lead over Rainbow Hearth, and it's Pine Lime stealing third place away from Two-Face. Rolling Dutchman a little bit farther back behind, but it's Green Swirl out in front, growing that lead quite a bit. As you see the battle for second place, and third has heated up, and... Pine Lime takes second place and is going to try to track down this leader. As you can see, the slow but fairly straight section and really opens up right now. Look at the speed that he's gaining right here. This is probably the fastest that we will see these marbles go for the entirety of the Sand Marble Rally season. A hard hit into a right-hander back there, and you can see Pine Lime closing up to Green Swirl. He can sense the lead is just out of his grasp. He's got to do a little bit more to try to get up to this leader, and it's Green Swirl out in front. But Pine Lime closing in. Green Swirl slowed up enough, and Pine Lime takes the lead. He had that momentary slowdown, but now he fights right back. Green Swirl wants that lead right back. He hits off that attenuator where the track divided, and that slowed him down even more. May have actually got him stranded up there by the look of it, but there are several marbles coming back behind. I have to think that they would have dislodged him, and he would keep going. But for right now, nobody in the frame. I don't think Pine Lime cares whether anybody is lodged up there or not, as long as he keeps going with nobody Inside, it's Pine Lime rolling his way through this area, which is deeply cut out of this sand here on the climbing dune. Back and forth he goes. Will anybody try to catch up to him as he goes underneath the tunnel here? Great shot of him flashing by the camera. And it's Pine Lime out in front. He really slows down there. There comes Two-Face. So Two-Face, obviously still on the move. Will he be able to catch up to this leading marble, who has led for a majority of this race except for the start? One path could have gone under, he chooses the over. Now back and forth through these S's, and he really slows down there. My goodness, is that going to give anybody a chance to catch up? Down in the bottom right there, you see some of the other competitors. They are still moving, and they are trying to track them down as best they can. But it's Pine Lime out front, and there comes Two-Face going right over a couple of the S's. And Two-Face has really closed up. Now all of a sudden, Pine Lime, I think, senses that he's got to get going with things, but he's slow off of that corner. Every single corner, Two-Face is closing up a little bit closer. Is he going to be able to try to take a nose to tail? He goes outside, now back inside. Two-Face trying to get the lead, but he's not going to be able to do it. Not this time, at least. Pine Lime stretching that lead after that really close call by Two-Face. My goodness. I'm sure he saw his life flash before his eyes right there, but it's Pine Lime still out in front trying to keep tabs on where Two Face is behind him and grow that lead as best he can. Getting down here into the lower sections of this race. Not too long to go. He's going to choose to go right and actually, yeah, I think he stopped. And Two Face has stopped right behind him, too. Oh my goodness, the top two are caught up on the right side here. And there comes the Rolling Dutchman! The Rolling Dutchman is going to take the lead and steal this race away from the top two who are stuck back there on the right side of that divider. My goodness, the Rolling Dutchman has come out of nowhere. He started almost last out of the starting gate up at the top. And there's the finish line inside. He's going back and forth, back and forth, and nobody is going to catch him. It's the Rolling Dutchman! 
winning here on this edition of the Sand Marble Rally. Now the question is, who is going to get second? That looks like Rainbow Heart back there. I think it is. Rainbow Heart is uh, slowly working his way down. Green Swirl back in second, and it's going to be Rain... Ra wait, Rainbow Heart actually gets caught up on the right side there. Oh my goodness! Rainbow Heart... Hello and welcome to this edition of the Sand Marble Rally. 33 competitors in the starting blocks, and there is a look at your course. Marbles in the blocks, and they're off. Comet taking the early lead over the Flash, then it's Reflector, Mocha Madness, Tarantula. Uh, Reflector up into second now, Mocha Madness. There's Deep Ocean flying up into second place. That very deep blue marble appropriately named loses out second place to Reflector as I say that, but it's still Comet out in the lead. Is anybody going to take that outside line? It looks like the Flash does, but that may actually be a slower pathway, it looks like, for him. He's going to lose several spots. Deep Ocean now up into second place, seeing if he can track down that light blue Comet up ahead as they snake through the S's. Still up front, it is Comet in front of Deep Ocean. Then, getting a lot of pressure from Mocha Madness, that's Reflector, then Tarantula back behind him. Uh, could be Snake's Tub snaking his way up into fourth place. Then the uh, off-yellow marble back there is Pollo Loco, a hard right hand that slows the field down. Now they bunch up. Two of them take the outside line, but... Uh, oh, and actually somebody got caught up there. That might have been Snake's Tub getting caught up on the wall. Uh, I don't know if he'll be able to dislodge with other marbles coming by him or not, but uh, one competitor possibly beached higher up on this course, but it's a neck and neck and neck race up there at the front. Oh, and actually Comet hits the divider. The attenuator slows him down, and he falls back into third place, now into the clutches of Deep Ocean. So it's Reflector out front, and now Tarantula takes the lead. Tarantula getting right by him. Uh, let's see who takes that upper line. Now Comet does, hoping that'll gain him back some time, but it really doesn't. Still back in fourth place now, Tarantula uh, at the lead in front of Reflector, Deep Ocean, then it's Comet, uh, possibly Dragon's Egg, who made a good move back there. I think that was the color of the marble that we saw. Nearly everybody taking that high line. And now Comet, just like that, fights back to the lead very quickly. Didn't take long at all. He is back out in front as they go through the tunnel, blasting back out into the light. Tarantula trying to chase him now, banging off the walls. Pollo Loco now into third. The yellow marble that you see there opts to take the higher line along with Tarantula. Where will they slot out? Uh, and actually, Reflector gets second place because of that. Here they come. Most of the field it actually looks like taking that bottom line. Comet opting for the upper line. And that may have gained him a little bit of an advantage as they come over the jump. Can Reflector and Tarantula catch up to the Comet? Out there in front by several lengths. Then back behind those top three, it looks like Dragon's Egg, then Pollo Loco. Is anybody going to be able to catch Comet at this point? As we take a look on the back part of the field, as they come down through these last few chicanes, up into this rib boulevard, Comet, with the finish line in sight. Tarantula will not be able to chase him down. Reflector going to round out the podium in front of Pollo Loco, Dragon's Egg, and Glassy. After an unexpectedly extended vacation, we're back with more marble racing, this time for Halloween. I'm sure the track has been cleared of black cats, and uh, Full Moon is up ahead, as well as some witches, I believe, who are providing aerial shots for us, so thanks to them. This time, just three marbles out in front, down this narrow and dark course. It is Jackalan, the orange marble out in front of Will of the Wisp, who, as I say that, gets passed by Eye of the Demon, that fiendishly dark red glowing marble as they go by a glowing haunted house as well. Not a lot of light out on this course, given a very eerie specter as these three work their way down. Will of the Wisp, out in back. Eye of the Demon trying to hold him off for second place. But he goes around the outside. Is he going to get him? Barely, yes. Will of the Wisp retakes second place, but can anybody come up and track down Jack-O-Lantern? Out in front, careening down this course with little regard to his own safety, much like the headless horseman just flying through this area. As I say that, they come to a crawl. 
the ground begins to get a lot more uh, bumpy and, and undulating down here. You see the occasional firelight illuminating the way. Not quite the muscos of Marina Bay in Singapore, but it gives them just enough light to see where they're going. And that could be one of the reasons why they're taking this so slow in some parts. They don't want to take a wrong turn, lest they get stuck. And as I say that, Eye of the Demon comes up into second place. As we look up ahead, though, trying now to close that gap to Jack-O-Lantern. Going through the S's. And ooh, gets stuck! Jack-O-Lantern is stuck! They're going to collide! And the front two continue. Will-O-The-Wisp is stuck farther back, but it's Jack-O-Lantern now out in front. Eye of the Demon retakes first place as they go under a flashing frog lamp. Uh, with eyes or something. Eye of the Demon continues now. Oh, look, Will of the Wisp continues again. He got going. It must have been just enough on those impacts to slowly roll him up ahead and continue on his way. It is Eye of the Demon out in front as they go into the tunnel, disappearing now into this mechanical uh, section here. It is Eye of the Demon still out in front by just a few lengths over Jack o' Lantern. There are all kinds of obstacles in the way. So they have to choose wisely as they work their way toward the finish line. Ooh, and a brief hang-up by Jack-O-Lantern. Psychedelic, man, I like that. All right, it is Eye of the Demon now out in front. Just behind him, neck and neck, is Jack-O-Lantern. Jack-O-Lantern takes the inside and is going to get through. Jack-O-Lantern wins the race in front of Eye of the Demon, and Will of the Wisp comes through three seconds. The two are separated by just 23 points, and with 30 on offer for a win, she knows that if Ghost Plasma wins the race, Big Pearl has to finish in second. And just like that, she's doing all that she can to make that an impossibility. And look at this, up into second place already, gaining 17 spots. She's tracking down H2 Blue now, jumps up in front of her as we look to see where Ghost Plasma is, and I believe he was mired at the back. Big Pearl cannot lose more than seven points to Ghost Plasma in this race, or else he will be the champion. Right now, she's desperately trying to track down. That's H2 Blue right up ahead. She jumps into first place at the hairpin, trying to hold him off. And I believe she does. Down through the right hand, and now back to the left right chicane as we continue down this course. Farther back behind, several marbles jostling for position. We may have even lost one, I believe, a little bit farther up ahead. But look at the lead that Big Pearl has, trying to guarantee that no matter what happens, she will gain points on the championship leader. This is also important in the battle for the other two podium spots, should that happen, because Dragon's Egg is just one point behind Big Pearl. Seven marbles right now are currently alive in the championship within 60 points of Ghost Plasma, but some of those marbles will need a heck of a lot of help. Woo, look at this! H2 Blue goes right over that ledge and closes right back up on the back of Big Pearl. She comes out of the corkscrew tunnel, still with a lead, trying to keep now Fantasy, it looks like, back in third, really hasn't done a heck of a lot in these later stages of the championship, but is now desperately closing in on Big Pearl for third place. Now she's back up, hounding the leader, H2 Blue, as they move through the back and forths over and over and over and over and over again, keeping lockstep those two marbles. No separation between them. Big Pearl trailing H2 Blue. They're beginning to get covered in sand right now. And Fantasy joins the mix up at the front for the top three. Farther back behind, is that El Capitan? I think it is. Just going off the left side of the picture there. Now, right behind Big Pearl. Big Pearl still has a good lead, but it is El Capitan. Look at this, taking that upper line, which I think might be a little bit slower now, but he's going to keep second place. Seeing if he can track down Big Pearl, the championship runner-up at this point. Bouncing off those walls, trying to stay as clean as possible. H2 Blue ops for the high line, whereas El Capitan goes low. Fantasy follows. Those are second and third, and now as I say that, El Capitan lunges around Big Pearl to take the lead. Hard with the right-hander. Now back and forth. Twisty this course is. I'm surprised this many marbles have stayed clean so far. There's Summer Sky coming into your picture on the left. Looking for a top five position, and at this point, Big Pearl is looking for a win. Seeing if she can track down El Capitan up front. Through the hairpin to the right. I'm not sure any marbles are going to take that lower line. No, they don't. That would have been a slower bit anyway. But it's El Capitan way up ahead now, stretching that lead, but can Big Pearl hold on to second? Maximizing her points, and H2 Blue takes second place as I say that. Will Fantasy get around her as well? Yes, he does. She briefly touched the wall, and that was enough to hang her up. Now Summer Sky is thinking, hey, I can maybe get fourth place as well. But it's El Capitan back up front. A 
big a lead as he's had all race. Streaming down in the final straightaway toward what we think is the finish line. Waiting for it to come into view. There it is. And El Capitan is going to win the race. Seeing which marbles get around the pool first. Oh, and look at this. Big Pearl falls to fifth. Fantasy loses out at the end to H2 Blue for the runner-up spot. But where is Ghost Plasma? That's the main thing. Looking here, 14th position. That is not good. A funnel-filled course awaits these eight marbles, but the objective is not to race to the bottom like we've seen in so many other events. This time, it is to show off your art of spinning. The last marble to make it through the final funnel will be declared the winner in the first round of this tournament. So far up top there, it's the Minty Maniacs circling around back and forth through funnel number one, and they will be the last stander in funnel number one, now coming into two to join the Green Gang. A little bit farther down below, that looks like Black Jacks was the only marble down in the fifth spot. They get passed by Team Phoenix. Phoenix down there into number six, but it's still, look at this, the Minty Maniacs up into funnel number two, finally joins down and pushes the Green Gang down to funnel four. Minty Maniacs taking their time up top, circling around the opening in three, now joining a three marble fight to stay out of the hole in funnel number four. Also a three-way fight down in funnel number seven, and as I say that, we move down to funnel eight, and now nine, Team Phoenix, desperately trying to hold on, but it's really not working for him. Team Phoenix looks on the verge of entering the final funnel and earning last place, if you will. They move down into 10, trying to stay up above the Ruby Rollers, who's also trying to join them down there in 10, and they do. Who is gonna be the first marble to finish? And it's Ruby Rollers. They are dead last. Remember, it's not the first to finish, it's the last. Team Phoenix looks like will probably come in next as they circle that one. Oh, the Green Gang is gonna take a lurch down there and try to take seventh place from them, if you will. Phoenix gets seventh. Green Gang now down there in funnel number 10. But in the three-way fight, look it up in funnel seven. Circling, circling, and it's the Blackjacks that come through first. Desperately trying to stay up there is the Golden Wisps. Now they're joined with just three funnels to go. Minty Maniacs circling along with the Blackjacks. Who is going to blink first? Meanwhile, the Green Gang and Blue Fastix came in sixth and fifth. Ooh, Minty Maniacs pushes Blackjacks down, and they stay up in eighth. Now they join the three marbles. Three left. This is the podium. We know that for sure. Valiant Violence takes fourth place, but who is going to enter the last funnel? Number ten first, and it is the Minty Maniacs. Circling up top there, they're going to be joined by the Blackjacks. Now Golden Wisps are circling in nine. Now they come dead even. Oh, and they come through Golden Wisps in third. Now who is going to win this event? Remember, it's the first marble to come through. It is going to get second, so you want to be the last one up there. Is it going to be Minty Maniacs? Is it going to be Blackjacks? Trying to figure out who will stay up. No, and it's Minty Maniacs coming through in second. Blackjacks, winner of this first event of the tournament. 15 points to them. It's the Minty Maniacs over the Golden Wisps and the Valiant Violets. Be sure to... Separating Mandarin for the Orangers from that fourth place spot. Now, the gold medal final. The Rangers in there. Cobalts. Also, Balls of Chaos now running in second place. Team Galactic also in there. The field, these are the ones who moved on from those first couple of races. Savage Speeders is also in the mix. As we see everybody staying pretty close. Clean through this first part of the course. Oh, and as I say that, I think we lost one of the O-Rangers. Off to the left, just suddenly veered over. I don't know if that was a, a current that pushed him over there, or maybe if he got a little help from one of the competitors, too. I don't know, but the somewhat rabid Rangers fans are not going to be thrilled about that. Hard over the waterfall. A couple of them go off to the side there. I think one of them might have gotten stuck, but we'll have to see. Savage Speeders trying to battle up there in the lead. Now they fall back a little bit, going through the chute. We lose sight of them until they pour out over this waterfall. Here they come. So far, everybody looks pretty clean. I don't know if we're going to lose any of them on that section. That might be the first time through that waterfall that we don't lose a competitor. Now the leader just disappearing off on the right-hand side of your screen. That might be Cobalt's running in second place. But I don't think anybody is going to catch. Was that Savage Speeders up front? I think it was. I think Savage Speeders are going to claim the gold medal here. That is going to be huge for them, and there's the end of the course. 
That's it, Savage Speeders, your gold medal winner in front of the Cobalts and Mellow Yellow. And Savage Speeders sitting in sixth right now, pick up their second gold medal of these Marble Olympics. All right, there you see the competitors in the starting blocks, ready to go on this long path along this Marble Rally 2015 course. And they're off. White takes the early lead over the dark red. Diamond in third in front of green, and then it looks like black. Narrowly ahead of purple, blue, and red number three. White getting a little bit of pressure there from the red. They're all stacking up in this early part of the course. Fairly straight so far. A bit slow on this section. Now it widens up just slightly as they go through that dip. The gap up front staying about the same. All marbles in lockstep so far as they begin to get into some undulating sections of this course. Here is where we might start to see the speed increase. We do a couple of passes down into that hard corner. Now they zip through there. White, a huge lead up front. Look at this gap in front of red and then diamond hard through that section back there, but white streaking away many lengths in front. Now dark red getting a little bit of pressure from diamond back behind. And it looks like green coming up just closer every single corner he's closing in white though look at this lead we're now one minute into the race and we begin the second part here blue getting passed by the purple out back there it is still white in front and red a lot of pressure now from the diamond back behind green closing in on him keeping sights as they go through this twisty technical section here we might see some passes as it begins to open up here in a little bit a lot of pressure back there. Blue is putting on purple, but it's still white out front with a good lead. Can they hold it? We go through a divergent section here. Will anybody take that outside lane? And it looks like a couple did. There comes Blue streaking through, bouncing, bouncing his way along that parallel path. Here's where they're gonna join back up and Blue slots into third place. Fantastic job by Blue taking that outside line. Now it's close. He wants second place from Red. Can anybody get there? A few jockeying back for position just off camera as we go through this little twisty section here. Many marbles taking a lot of different routes, but red still holding that second place in front of blue, but for how much longer? Under the tunnel they go. Blue right up against the back of marble. Now two minutes into this race, red number three has made some good progress, as you can see, taking that outside line. And red still holding station in front of blue. White way out ahead now. This wide boulevard, you can see another section. Can anybody? No, nobody's going to take the outside line. Red! Red comes out of nowhere and takes second place. My goodness, through the corkscrew, and it's red number three into second place. Can he get up there and challenge for the lead? He is on one heck of a run, taking that outside path as this sharp 90-degree right-hander begins to funnel them down toward the end of this course. Red cutting into the gap up front for white. What can he do? Then it is the dark red back behind him, blue, as you can see just off camera, but it's still white holding that lead. Can anybody track down white? He goes the low route, looks like everybody will based on the geometry there. Now dark red pressuring right up against red number three as white streaks off, trying to stay off the walls if he can, and he couldn't. That allows them right up alongside of him, and it's red number three who's gonna take the lead. Down through this little tunnel section here, they funnel through and White has lost the lead for the first time in this race and it's red number three taking the lead. Unbelievable. Through that section, White was just bouncing off the walls a little bit too much. It slowed him down. Although now he's going to give a little bit of a challenge through this very twisty back and forth, almost a slalom section, it looks like, as we get down uh, about halfway through this course. Now we're, we're over halfway, I would say. Opening here onto the wide boulevard again. This is where White had its undoing. It narrows up a little bit, and there you go. We begin the final stage at that little raised berm back there. These look like a little bit more sweeping turns, and White closing up on red number three again. Just a couple lengths back. Will he be able to have anything in the bag for him? Dare I say the marble bag? Red number three going through these wide sections, and I'm not sure anybody's going to catch him. Then it's dark red. Blue's been hanging around there in the uh, top five for most of this race, it looks like. But red three stretching that lead a little bit more, staying fairly clean through this section, and Blue's going to give a little bit of a challenge to dark red. Dark red actually closing up on white as well. Now past the four minute mark, as you can see in this down the wide boulevard and across the finish line, it's red number three and whoa, nearly dark red pipping white at the end, but they were able to hold on to it. Then diamond comes across black gold and it looks like several are not going to make it and get pushed across. There you can see the final order after one heck of a race, 230 meters worth.
Hello and welcome. Choose a team in this F1 themed marble race. And we're off. Force India out in front of Mercedes as they go through these early S's. Every marble deciding to take the right side there. Force India getting caught up. Now it's Mercedes up front being pressured by Toro Rosso. Ferrari making a jump from last up into third over the last few corners. But it's Mercedes as in F1 stretching its lead out there in front of Toro Rosso. Then Ferrari back behind and now both of those marbles begin to close up ever so slightly. Way in back there's Red Bull trailing behind Force India. But it's Mercedes out in front briefly getting caught up. All three of the top three hit on that center divider. It slows them ever so slightly, but now they keep going. Ferrari lurches up into second place. And now can they track down the Silver Arrows up front? Oh, and they both get caught up on the right-hand side there. And look at who shoots to the front. My goodness, that is Toro Rosso, but now Ferrari back in front. Toro Rosso and Ferrari trading the lead at this point. Mercedes right back behind it. A fairly big gap, and they both get caught up, and Mercedes jumps to the lead. But now here comes Force India in third, trying to track down, see if they can get up into Toro Rosso. But it's Force India losing a little bit of ground with these top two. Mercedes keeping station up in front. Ferrari back up into fourth, now sneaks around, lazily into the side into third. Now Mercedes gets passed up front as they work their way down toward the end of this race. Ferrari nose to tail with Mercedes, but it's Force India going to come across in front and winning the race.